Chapter 2. There is a science of getting rich. And it's an exact science like algebra or arithmetic. There are certain laws which govern the process of acquiring riches. And once these laws are learned and obeyed by anyone, that person will get rich with mathematical certainty. The ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way. And those who do things in this certain way, whether on purpose or accidentally, get rich. While those who do not do things in this certain way, no matter how hard they work or how able they are, remain poor. It's a natural law that like causes always produce like effects. And therefore, any man or woman who learns to do things in this certain way will unfallibly get rich. That the above statement is true is shown by the following facts. Getting rich is not a matter of environment. For if it were, all the people in certain neighborhoods would become wealthy. The people of one city would all be rich, while those of other towns would all be poor. Or all the inhabitants of one state would roll in wealth, while those of an adjoining state would be in poverty. But everywhere we see rich and poor living side by side in the same environment, and often engaged in the same vocations. When two people are in the same locality and in the same business, and one gets rich while the other remains poor, it shows that getting rich is not primarily a matter of environment. Some environments may be more favorable than others, but when two people in the same business are in the same neighborhood, and one gets rich while the other fails, it indicates that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. And further, the ability to do things in this certain way is not due solely to the possession of talent. For many people who have great talent remain poor while others who have very little talent get rich. Studying the people who have gotten rich, we find that they are an average lot in all respects, having no greater talents and abilities than other people have. It is ev evident that they do not get rich because they possess talents and abilities that others do not have, but because they happen to do things in a certain way. Getting rich is not the result of saving or thrift. Many very pernious people are poor, while free spenders often get rich. Nor is getting rich due to things which others fail to do. For two people in the same business often do almost exactly the same things, and one gets rich while the other remains poor or becomes bankrupt. From all these things, we must come to the conclusion that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. And if like causes always produce like effects, then any man or woman who can do the things in that way can become rich, and the whole matter is brought within the domain of exact science. The question arises here as to whether this certain way may not be so difficult that only a few may follow it. As we have seen, this cannot be true. As far as natural ability is concerned, talented people get rich and blockheads get rich. Intellectually brilliant people get rich and very stupid people get rich. Physically strong people get rich, and weak and sickly people get rich. Some degree of ability to think and understand is of course essential, but insofar as natural ability is concerned, any man or woman who has the sense enough to read and understand these words, or listen to them in this case, can certainly get rich. Also, we have seen that it is not a matter of environment. Yes, location counts for something. One would not go into the heart of the Sahara and expect to do successful business. Getting rich involves the necessity of dealing with people and of being where there are people to deal with. And if these people are inclined to deal in the way you want to deal, so much the better. But that is about as far as environment goes. If anybody else in your town can get rich, so can you. And if anybody else in your state can get rich, so can you. Again, it's not a matter of choosing some particular business or profession. People get rich in every business and in every profession. Well, their neighborhoods uh, or neighbors next door in the very same vocation remain in poverty. It's true that you'll do your best in a business which you like and which is congenial to you. And if you have certain talents which are well developed, you'll do your best in a business which calls for the exercise of those talents. And we'll talk a little bit about that more in this video as well. Also, you'll do your best in a business which is suited to your locality. An ice cream parlor would do better in a warm climate than in Greenland, and a salmon fishery will succeed better in the Northwest than in Florida, where there are no salmon. 
But aside from these general limitations, getting rich is not dependent upon your engaging in some particular business, but upon your learning to do things in a certain way. If you're now in business and anybody else in your locality is getting rich in the same business while you're not getting rich, it's simply because you're not doing the things in the same way that the other people are doing them. No one is prevented from getting rich by lack of capital. True, as you get capital, the increase becomes more easily and rapid. But one whose capital is already rich and does not need to consider how to become so. No matter how poor you may be, if you begin to do things in a certain way, you'll begin to get rich and you'll begin to have capital. The getting of capital is a part of the process of getting rich and it is a part of the result which invariably flows the doing of things in a certain way. You may be the poorest person on the continent and be deeply in debt. You may have neither friends, influence, nor resources. But if you begin to do things in this way, you must infallibly begin to get rich. For like causes must produce like effects. If you have no capital, you can get capital. If you're in the wrong business, you can get into the right business. If you're in the wrong location, you can go to the right location. And you can do so by beginning in your present business and in your present location to do the things in a certain way which always causes success. You must begin to live in harmony with the laws governing the universe. End of chapter 2. I hope you all enjoyed that story. As I was thinking about and preparing this lesson for you, um, I had a thought, really an iconic epiphany of sorts. I was thinking back to the title of my latest book, Find Your Place by Following Your Passions. The thought was that we really we don't exactly find our place. Rather, our place finds us, and only after we discover and really hone in on and exercise upon our true passions. Another thought is that we really need to not only know our passions, but to cultivate them passions into our sweet spot. So we can make the transfer into doing what we were and are meant to be doing in our business life. This transition piece is the largest piece to cultivate business success. Remember the words that Wallace just shared. It's true that you will do your best in a business which you like and which is congenial to you. And if you have certain talents which are developed, you will do best in a business which calls for the exercise of those talents. Well, your sweet spot is a place that you operate from that combines your passions, your talents, and the readily made resources that you have available to you to run your business. You've got to be working in your particular sweet spot. Knowing your talents and what you're good at in business helps you realize what you don't enjoy doing as well so that you can outsource them projects and remain doing what you love. After all, that is the idea, right? Now I'm going to use myself as an example to illustrate this. But first, this information is extremely useful whether you're in business already or are just starting out trying to uh, find the right business match for yourself. It's entirely possible that the business you currently may be in is wrong fit for you and as a result will only hamper your results no matter how hard you may be trying. So back to my illustration and finding my own sweet spot. I have an entrepreneurial mindset handed down a few generations on my dad's side and a heart of compassion given by my mother in other words, genetic strengths. Combine this with a struggle to find success in my own life and what you get is a compassionate entrepreneur who wants to help people find personal and business success in their own life. Now, let's take this a step further. Through my own struggle, I have found and applied some profound teachings and answers by some world-class teachers. Now I had a message and a platform to share in the areas of personal development and business as well as social proofs and successes in my own life. The last part is readily available resources. In my case, one of my favorite things to do, things that I really enjoy and can't wait to get up in the morning to do, is write and create informational videos just like this one. And it just so happens that my neighbor is a web designer with a passion for graphic arts and video creation. And voila, a career in the making. I hired my neighbor and have been on a working together on a per project basis for the last couple of years. So to break it down again, I took what I was genetically gifted at, took some life struggle and experience, took the resources around me and found out what I was 
it would enjoy the most and created a career. In other words, working in my sweet spot. Do I need to know Photoshop, web creation, or fancy video programs? No, I just work in the areas that I love and enjoy. This is the transition that you have to make in your own life with your gifts, talents, abilities, and resources so that you can flourish and find what it is that you're passionate about so that success can seek you out and find you. Make sense? Now, I'd like you to do an exercise to help you find your sweet spot. I want to talk you through some questions and really start to think about the answers. We'll move through this fairly quickly, but don't worry because I created a PDF download link at the bottom of this video on this page. I encourage you to stop right now and go ahead and print out the PDF to work along as we go. So, go ahead, stop the video and print out the PDF. Okay, are you ready? Great. Step one. Let's start off by answering some questions. What could I find myself talking to somebody for hours without any sign of tiring? Over the years, what thoughts or ideals have continuously come up that I've been yearning to explore? Remember, I'm going to go fast, but don't worry. Start to think about these things. What industry would I love to be the king or queen of? What am I authentically curious about? What actively do I love doing that makes me feel fulfilled? Now, step two. What solutions do people frequently come to you for? What subjects do you feel excited about? What activities do you feel most competitive in? All right, step three. Pick three topics. Here's how it works. You pick a list of topics that resonate most with the answers you came up with in step one and two. What are three topics that you are deeply passionate about? Could be anything like relationships, sports or fitness, science, or whatever floats your boat. <laughs> now, step four is the elimination process. Here's where you test your level of effectiveness in each category. For each topic that you have picked of the three, I want you to run through these series of questions. Remember, don't think that you have to be the expert at this. You just have to be a few steps ahead of the people that you want to help. Now write yes or no answer beside each topic. Are there people actively seeking help in your topic of interest? In your own life, have you overcome a common challenge that people in your topic interested in need help with? Can you offer a proven solution that works or are you committed to finding a solution? Remember, a yes or no between beside the each of the three. Okay, have you help someone through this challenge in the past or would you like to help someone in the future? Great, you've explored your mind and emotions to see where your sweet spot may be. Of course there's some market research to do to really hone in on what type of business and business model is best for you. But don't worry though because in our next video in this series we cover some market research to help you along. So let this be your homework for now. Remember this is for you, so give it some time and thought. And I encourage you to go through these exercises right after this video.